Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from 2003 between Peter Heine Nielsen and Luke McShane. Uh, I'm showing this game as uh, you guys have probably already saw uh, the interview Chess Base India made with Peter Heine Nielsen but also with Vladimir Potkin, uh, the, the chief trainer of, of Yanni Pomnichi for the World Chess Championship match 2021. So I just wanted to, uh, in case you haven't, do check it out. It will be the first link and the second link in the description below. Uh, so the interview uh, by Chess Base India by, uh, with uh, Peter Heine Nielsen. Nielsen and, and Vladimir Potkin, uh, if you guys want to learn a bit more about what happened during the World Championship, what happened behind the scenes. It's a very extensive interview uh, and, uh, well, I, I, I do not want to repeat anything that, that was said in there, so I just decided to um, uh, show you one of uh, uh, one of uh, Peter's games as I thought this was a really fun one uh, and just invite you to, to check out the interviews. Now, it's interesting, uh, this is uh, Peter's eighth World Chess Championship title uh, and uh, what's also very interesting is that not only did he work for both Anand and Magnus Carlsen uh, but during their first match in 2013 uh, when uh, Carlsen first challenged Carlsen, uh, uh, Anand for the title uh, he did not work for for either of them so he only started working with Magnus in 2014 so uh, interestingly as soon as he stepped down as uh, Anand's uh, second uh, Anand lost the title and uh, well so far uh, he's been in every World Chess Championship uh, match Magnus played and Magnus uh, you know uh, retains the title every time so uh, definitely uh, something Peter has up his sleeve that is, you know, allowing these champions to, to, to stay on top. Uh, but that being said, do check it out. It's a really awesome interview. I've watched it in its entirety, so I, I do recommend it. Uh, and let's check out this game. It's a very short one, but uh, it's, uh, you know, very enjoyable one. Uh, so uh, Peter with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6. He's facing a very strong English grandmaster, Luke McShane. No doubt uh, all of you uh, have, have heard of him. Uh, we have c4, g6, and now knight to c3. We have d5, so a normal Groomfield defense. c captures on d5, we have knight captures, uh, and e4 now chasing away the knight. Of course, we have a capture on c3, captures, captures, and now bishop to g7. Uh, is pretty much uh, always played here, but uh, McShane goes for the uh, sort of a, an early deviation with c5. Uh, I don't know the exact difference this makes because uh, obviously you have to be very strong to uh, to take advantage of this, but uh, may maybe there really isn't any. Maybe it's just a you know, different move order, but I doubt it because in the database, bishop to g7 is just like 20,000 games and um, you know c5 maybe like a thousand games, but okay. It uh, doesn't really matter because they tra transpose into the, the standard line. We have bishop to c4, bishop to g7. Now the bishop uh, bishop is fianchettoed, uh, controlling this very long diagonal. Knight to e2, uh, preparing the castle, also adding more support to the center. Knight to c6, black also fights for the center, and now bishop to e3. So this is kind of the theme of this opening. We're fighting for that center. Uh, and now you could just castle and continue the game, but black decides to uh, relieve some of the tension in the center. He plays c captures on d4, c captures, and now queen to a5 check. Now, what does he want with this uh, check? Well, he's asking white. Do you want to block with the queen? Do you want to play king to f1 and play some sort of a, a game without the, the early castles? Or do you want to move the bishop back, which kind of uh, forces you to, to waste a tempo? Uh, and also, uh, you will not be defending your d4 square as, as properly as you are now. So, okay, bishop back to d2, attacking the queen. Queen back to d8 now with some pressure on the d4 square. And now white... Uh, uh, either goes back, but that's like saying, okay, I'm, I'm very happy with a draw here, uh, or he advances d5, like uh, it happened in this game. Now, what do you do here? Uh, obviously, you are offering the rook for a knight, but not really. If uh, black captures the rook, white, of course, will not capture on c6. White, white will capture the bishop here, attack the black rook on h8, and now after you tend uh, to, to the rook, of course, we're going to capture the knight on c6, and white is just winning. So knight to e5 has to be played. Now the bishop here is attacked. Uh, uh, but it doesn't matter, just bishop c3. And now, uh, of course, this is uh, uh, very good for white because if you capture on c4, we're going to capture on g7. And okay, you don't lose any material. For example, queen to a4 check. You can block bishop d7, queen captures on c4. We're going to capture here. But after white castles, uh, white has uh, excellent central control. The rook is on g7. The king is not castling. So this would be pretty bad for, for, for black. Uh, so instead, uh, we have ca uh, just castles, uh, and now comes bishop back to b3, uh, so you don't have to worry about this tension here. Queen to b6 uh, with some tricky lines possible as df2 
two pawn might become a little bit weak. So there might be some ideas of maybe knight to g4 attacking the bishop here and also threatening the f2 pawn, but it doesn't really work uh, as Peter will show. So he plays f4, attacks the knight, and now if you try something like this, yes, it looks very scary. Queen f2, bishop captures, and c3 are the threats, but just bishop d4. And you don't really have all that much. Once everything gets traded off, captures, 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 white... Uh, uh, you know, has this beautiful center, uh, the pieces are nicely developed, you can just castle and the black uh, can't really hope to uh, get all that much out of the position here. So instead, after f4, we have knight back to d7, and now we have a trade. Captures, captures, and rook to c1. Uh, uh, putting the rook on this uh, only open file uh, on the board for the moment, uh, and, uh, well, preparing some very nasty stuff, because uh, uh, the dark square bishops uh, have left the board, and the black really has some dark square weaknesses around his king. So you want the white queen to somehow gain control of this diagonal. Uh, so rook to d8, uh, and now comes rook to c4. We move the rook, and now we prepare to bring the queen over to this diagonal. e5 now, uh, and here just queen to a1, uh, not allowing the capture. Now the, the pawn cannot move. Uh, and uh, interestingly, uh, Luke McShane had this position after this game some th some three months uh, uh, against another player, Jonathan Parker, in the European Cup. Uh, and there he played rook to e8. But here in the game against Nielsen, he played uh, f6 he uh, well not only defends the e5 pawn but he's now also preparing e captures on f4 because now the pawn can capture but there is one thing that uh, makes this move uh, a bit of a problem uh, not just uh, you know they often say that you know f6 isn't uh, the, the best move in most positions but uh, for this position it is true uh, because now uh, we have queen to c3 and by playing f6, you, of course, weaken the 7th rank, and now rook to c7, uh, well, it, it's, not an, uh, it's not a very pleasant move to have to face. So here, e captures on f4, black continues with his plan, knight captures on f4, and now knight to e5, attacking the rook on c4, rook to c7, check, of course, uh, this was our plan all along, and now king to h8. And now, uh, this video will have two very nice pause the video moments, so uh, this is the first one. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for white here it's not an easy one to spot so uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this because it's, uh, well, you, you really have to see deep into the position to, you know, uh, spot such a move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is rook to f1. That's that's the good stuff. Uh, as you see, the rook is cutting off the king from the seventh rank. So it's, uh, uh, well, the, for the moment, the king cannot help out with the defense of the f6 pawn. And the f6 pawn is pretty much the only thing that keeps black alive in this position because with the rook controlling the seventh rank the queen controlling this diagonal if we if we remove the f6 pawn it just all falls apart so uh, black continues with bishop to d7 of course you want to cut off the rook's um, uh, influence on the seventh rank and also you want to bring this rook into the game and try and trade everything off uh, because white is very just very very strong here so knight to e6 uh, putting pressure on the rook here and also saying yes uh, by all means capture on uh uh, on e6 but if black does this of course we don't capture the bishop we just play rook captures on f6 and now look at this how are how are you defending this even with the absolute best defense by black which is queen to b4 looks very odd it's like you're giving up a queen but not really you will win back the queen with this fork uh, but even with this for example knight to d3 checking e2 knight captures on b4 uh, after white gets this beautiful pass pawn it's uh, just game over there is no defending this this rook coming to f7 we're just gonna harass the king uh, along the uh, seventh rank and then well uh, you, you are not escaping this attack so this is out of the question so instead rook d to c8 was played getting the rook out of harm's way attacking the rook on c7 uh, but now comes rook captures on f6 and now white achieved uh, everything white hoped for when he played rook to f1 he eliminated the f6 pawn and there's no good uh, defense against uh, well the, the queen just controlling this diagonal so here we have rook captures on c7 attacking the queen uh, but this uh, will simply uh, not be enough so feel free to pause the video and again find the only winning move in the position while I give you a couple of seconds 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not doing anything weird like recapturing on C7, even though this is fine for you to draw the game, it's not enough for you to win the game. And for those of you who found the winning idea, that is Rook to F8 check. Congratulations, this is uh, the absolute best. This is a forced made in four. And it's interesting how both pause the video moments were <laughs> with the Rook, just Rook to F1, uh, then Rook to F8, uh, but you know, it, it happens. So there is no move black and play here. It's only Rook capture on f8 that this is the only possible move as the g7 square is covered by the knight so rook captures and here queen captures and e5 was played and it was in this position on move 27 that luke mcshane resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here you could start giving up some material but basically it's just king g8 queen g7 checkmate and that's it so there you go, uh, a wonderful game by uh, by uh, Peter Heine and Nilsson, uh, the head coach of the Magnus Carlsen World Chess Championship team, uh, also as Magnus puts it, the only adult in the room. You can see that uh, he's not only a, a, a great coach, he also prepares very, very well for the games and uh, can create a, a, a masterpiece such as this one. So hope you enjoyed the game and also uh, you know do check it out, do check out both of the interviews if you have the time. It will be a time well spent. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Begum Farida, Gordon T. Wright, Andy Chamberlain, Alan Drapkin, and Jack Obeid for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and everything else that happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.